Hi, my name is Anamika Hops, and this is The Art Friend Show, where every conversation focuses on getting to know the essence of creativity itself. I'd love to invite you as well to join me inside of Art Friends School, where we go deeper into these topics and join in with other art friends around the world. Thanks so much for joining us, and let's get to the show. Hi, my name is Mika, and it's really nice to meet you. This is The Art Friends Show, so let's Go! Hi! <laughs> I'm Anamika Hops. I'm an artist in Portland, Oregon, and this is day 21 of going live on Instagram every day for 100 days in a row, workshopping the concept of the Art Friends Show. And here it is, day 21. My dear guest had to cancel today, so I get to do a solo episode. And I thought it would be super fun to reflect on the first 20 interviews and share some of the ways that I'm looking to improve. And since this really is a community collaborative effort, I also welcome your comments and suggestions and insights because my intention with this project is to be the steward of this idea that has been like beckoning at me for years to create the Art Friend Show and Art Friend World, a global community project that gives resources um, for us fellow creatives. Make friends with our creativity and each other. That's like becoming the tagline. And as you can see, I'm playing with the intro song, the, um, the way that they're structured, all of it. Oh, thank you, honey. Um, watching live, giving some love. So without further ado, let's reflect back on each of the first 20 interviews. And along the way, I'll share a nugget of insight and also share some of the ways I'd like to continue to improve and learn from this project. Okay, so day one, I have them pulled up here on my laptop below. So day one was February 22nd. And what I learned from day one is that when we declare it, so many things come in to assist, right? It's like that Goethe quote, um, anything you can dream or do, begin it because boldness has genius power and magic in it. And in that day, even as I voiced like, hello, my name is Anamika and I'm going to do this project. Inside, I was like, really? <laughs> really? Are we doing? <laughs> it feels like, you know, it's like a commitment, like like parenting or something where you're like, I have no idea how I'm going to do this, but we are going to accomplish this. So day one, the boldness of declaring an idea already generated so much energy. All right, let's see what we learned from day two. So day two, my dear um, fellow artist and former client, Gigi, AKA Glenda Goodrich, came on and that was so exciting. Um, Gigi lives in Salem, Oregon. I live in Portland. And one thing I really saw in her interview is, you know, she's about to launch a book. And when we worked together in a mentoring relationship, which she divulges in this um, interview, she was, con she was coming up with the concept for this book, right? She was saying she goes on these quests, these spiritual quests, and um, she created a chapter for each one. And this was what her legacy project to give to her grandchildren. Now it's way beyond that. Um, it encompasses her art and her writing. It's a, it's a, a very comprehensive style of memoir. And so just seeing that, I mean, as a, as a human who has been an art teacher and mentor, and, you know, basically, I just like love artists through their process of claiming their voice and making work and sharing it, that thrills me. So right there, um, like, thank you, Gigi, because also it helped me cast aside some doubt and get out of the way and just let her tell her story and be like, wow, awesome. Many other things in that interview, so lovely. Let's see, day three, I didn't have a guest. So I decided to, um, talk about this project. And it, I was very open and candid about my ideas for it. Um, a bit about how I'm at a crossroads in my career, having um, 
spent the past year, you know, majorly changing my life, leaving my marriage, moving house multiple times. Now I'm really settled and I have the energy and wherewithal to do this. And so this is me asking, you know, it's like asking like the universe, like, what do you want from me? Basically, I can paint, I can mentor. Uh, like I have this unique gift of like helping people get, you know, get kind of get on stage, share their, share their voice. So use me and show me what's next. And, um, I am also asking the community, like, what do you want? Um, as I create this, I'm loving doing this show and I want it to take a permanent form as the art friend show. And I'm, you know, I'm a business lady. I've been running my own business for over a decade and I would like to build a year round sustainable membership offering where I'm teaching live classes monthly and you have the opportunity to work with each other as well as me in the art friend world. So I kind of divulge that and what I'm really finding and thank you for the gift of your attention if you're watching is like it really helps me. I thrive under performance pressure and so getting the ideas out there with you is very efficient. You'll see this as well in the next day when I um, came on. Gosh, I spent all day trying to figure this one out. I was really attached to the idea of creating a second account so I could join as my own guest and aim it at my hands so I could do this cool thing of like talking and drawing or painting at the same time. Ultimately, it didn't really work. The audio is terrible because there's like a feedback loop and I got very frustrated. I spent hours and hours and hours trying to figure this out. And I have actually spent hours in the past trying to figure it out. So I don't know, maybe that'll just make us all feel more normal that some tech things like announcing on Instagram, you're gonna do a hundred day project like I did and I set up a interview, you know, scheduling link. And like, suddenly I had three weeks booked out. Gigi was on my schedule in the morning. Like that was just, I built that in just a few hours once I declared it. But this, <laughs> I could not figure it out. I still haven't. I'm so frustrated. So that, you know, sometimes it doesn't work. The next day I had Corinna. Oh yes. Of Pitix. And this was an awesome interview where Corinna shared, um, what I really got from this is you don't always see like the magnificent business that an artist is running unless they really tell you. Like I had no idea she's this like, you know, total like ninja. <laughs> she's got this really cool business where she goes into the archives um, and she finds images of Santas and birds and other historical images, which is a real thrill for her, like traveling and going into archives, something she would do anyway. And then she makes these images available for licensing. Isn't that brilliant? These are images that are old, they're out of copyright. The world wouldn't be seeing them in this way, but then they're brought back to life on products. She also makes her own art and it was really fun on that call. This is something I wanna do more of. We solved an actual kind of like fine art problem, making blue drippies together. And she was really um, frustrated trying to get her watercolors to carry more pigment as they dripped. And it was awesome because we actually had um, someone else on the call who ended up being a guest later, who is like a very experienced watercolorist and made a suggestion and we both tried it and it worked. And so she got these like satisfying blue drippies. So watch the interview with Corinna Buckles of Pitix um, from February 26th if you want to figure out blue drippies. Okay, next. Um, oh, I was just sharing because I was excited. Okay, the next one was with Stephanie Ryan. And Stephanie is um, just an incredible artist here. It was really fun to talk about intuitive florals too. And one thing I noticed, Stephanie, is your following is so loyal. There were so many people there just being like, I love you. You changed painting for me. There's this, like, there's just this emanating quiet reverence that, that just comes from Stephanie. And I know for me as an interviewer, like, it's such a treat to get to meet people in this way and just be like, yeah, watch watch that. So that was a very lovely thing. Um, and, and really fun to hear more about those offerings. 
Okay, so we're summarizing, you know, just a little gem of insight or something wonderful from each of the first uh, 20 art print interviews. So then on February 28th, we had Cassie Ott. Now, um, she and I uh, have known each other through a professional organization, and it was so cool to get on here and just feel her energy and hear her personal story, too, of actual, you know, some some really hard years that then inspired, you know, she struggled to kind of find her art and then inspired this really um, consistent theme of rainbows in her work. And um, Cassie also does a weekly offering called Studio Time, which I recommend going to if you're craving an accountability and a quiet witness, because it sounds like it's basically a check-in and then a quiet working time via Zoom. And she's been very consistent with offering that. And I think that's a very generous and needed thing. I just get so many ideas from all of these talks. Okay, the next day was March 1st, and it was a solo episode, and I decided to share the evolution of my teaching career. And I just went, you know, kind of year by year and talked and made a timeline. And I was totally, you know, teachered out on my whiteboard over there. And so if you're a teaching artist or interesting and interested in getting into it, and maybe my story might be relevant. A lot of people ask, like, how do I get started teaching? I always just say the best way to get started teaching is to teach some people. <laughs> like, there's really, that's it, right? The best way to learn how to paint is to push paint around and, and start painting. And the best way to learn how to teach is to get some people who are interested in learning something from you and with you. Because ultimately, you know, we learn with our people. And when I first started teaching, I was, I felt very close to the same the same level of like wonder and experimentation. And then I evolved into doing this thing instead of teaching people how to do it, how to paint a certain preconceived thing in my style, I learned how to really just love and hold space for people while they evolved in their own style. And I'm excited to see where it goes from here. Okay, the next day, again, was a solo episode. I was holding it down. And so I gave a tour of my workspace and then I, workshopped this new offering this that feels like it's going to be this will be my kind of big teaching or mentoring like this is how this energy is going to show up long term is in art friend world and so in that one I like, like actively workshopped it so if you're an entrepreneur own your own creative business and you know it might be interesting to see how um, those ideas come together I've done that with many, many friends and clients as well, workshopping different concepts for how to put a business together. And then after that big brainstorm session, you sit down and you calculate the hours and you figure out what you need to charge and what type of support you need and how much it's going to take administratively to support long term. Um, and then you launch. So I'm in that phase now of all the calculations. I actually have a meeting with my dear Dear, um, like right hand woman, Leslie Costin, who's we've worked together. She's been a virtual assistant or it feels like I should just call her like my, you know, collaborator and supporter extraordinaire because she's helped me since 2017 with most of my online teaching offerings. So we're meeting on Thursday to talk more nuts and bolts. And then I will be launching Art Friend World, which will be a lot. I'll be teaching a live like master class every month. Um, that people can join just for the month or they can join for the full year. Yeah. All right. So then the next day, March 3rd. Oh, <laughs> I posted a picture of art. I was like, crap, my Instagram is just becoming like all interviews, but that's okay. I'm letting that go. It's, it's definitely a lot. Yeah. Sophie's cheering. Yay, Leslie. Leslie's an artist herself. She's amazing. She's yeah. Okay. So the next interview is with Brit Susie who lives in New Hampshire as a painter. And that one's really fun because we get to like peek at a bunch of her new paintings. And she's just one of those people that's like, bam, you know, like you, you <laughs> she's just so powerful. And to see the incredible um, prolificness and all the new work and hear her insight into, um, you know, the intention of some of her new series, it was a, a real treat. And Britt and I talked about how many years ago uh, we met in an online class learning how to get comfortable on video. 
And I think that um, that was years before the pandemic and everybody in some way has had to learn how to get on video through the pandemic because so many things went online. And I think that's great. And also it led to Zoom fatigue and <laughs> facelifts. <laughs> I don't know, is that, a, is that real? But for people who are like, ah, I, I don't like seeing, you know, um, myself on video. Um, but I do think that there is just like anything else we can practice and we can become more comfortable and more comfortable um, with any medium and this is one of them. And so if you're watching this and you're curious about trying out your first Instagram live and talking about your art, I would love to steward you through that process and help you. And I will help prep you. Um, we'll meet in Zoom before, if you schedule yourself an art friend interview, we'll meet in Zoom before and I'll help you prep and then we'll go live together. And if anything technical doesn't work, we'll just go back to Zoom and figure it out and then we'll go live together. And it's just like, I don't know, it just thrills me to help people do that. Okay, so the next thing is Marissa Huber. Oh yeah. So the March 4th interview was with Marissa and she, she's just a force. So she's one of the co-founders of the um, Carve Out Time for Art community and she's a connector um, and she's also a mentor. I feel like she's like we're similar energy and she's just like able to do it so and so big and so generous and she as you can see in this interview I really felt that Marissa just poured into me as I, like I felt so filled up and nourished and encouraged and I felt coached in that I felt just I felt her gifts just coming in. Um, and she decided to host that interview on her own Carve Out Time for Art, which was such a gift because that has a huge audience. And so it was also an example of like our community being like, oh, yo, I see you're trying to do a thing here. I've got these resources. Let me lift you up. So solid from Marissa. <laughs> Thank you, honey. So you still have other people I need to follow up on. Um, but that's for after. Um, remind me to talk about admin. Okay, so the next day was Miranda. Okay, so March 5th, we talked to Miranda Morehouse. And Miranda Morehouse is a painter. She's in currently based in Southern California, and her work is really fed down there. It's a great location for her. And it was so fun to talk to her. Um, Miranda also openly shares that she's a past client of mine who did the mentorship. And so any client that does that, like I always feel like a bit of my heart is always in their work. And I feel just this like sense of just pride and, and celebration for all the steps that they take from then on. And Miranda's really going for it. It was so exciting to talk to her. I'm learning from her. I watch her, you know, in motion and, and seeing her gifts. She can really flex like as a business owner and et cetera. So yeah, watch that one if you just want to get really inspired uh, about starting your own creative business. Okay, the next one is March 6th. Oh, Nikki! That was with Nikki Cade, my dear. And um, yeah, we, we really talk about several of the projects that Nikki has done over the years. And I, Nikki, I want to have you back on the show because there are so many more. You are someone who contains so many multitudes and... In this interview, we got to talk about some of your um, muses, which are like these miniature um, handmade dolls. And they originated as ornaments, and now you're doing them as like one per month as a subscription. And they all have a name and, and like a, a personality, and you do their whole character. You build worlds. Nikki is a world builder and a storyteller and just really, really also has a level of execution of all of her ideas, whether she's done, you know, leading a retreat in Bali or developing a year round, you know, subscription to her handmade miniatures, or she's developing new dolls, um, she murals, etc. She, she has a really consistent style through all of that. It's super cool. So definitely follow her and watch her evolution. It's thrilling. All right. The next day was August Ren. Oh, Jennifer Orkin Lewis. Okay, so here's the flex. Like she's when I have whenever you hear me do the intro and I'm saying, This is the Art Friend Show, I would like to talk to artists at any stage of your career, emerging, established, world renowned. 
Yo, Jennifer Orkin Lewis is world renowned and happens to be the nicest, so chill, so welcoming, and it was so fun to catch up. We met in person um, er earlier in my career, I think several years after she had begun doing her daily painting and had already gained some recognition, and now she's just everywhere. Everybody, everybody can recognize her work in an instant, and it has inspired kind of a whole perhaps derivatives, but you know, she's, she's just, yeah, she's a visionary and very generous. And it was very fun. And that one also for me personally was a little bit, um, of a trying to up the ante. Cause I asked her if we might be able to draw portraits of each other during our interview. And she was such a good sport. She said, yes. And I think that that just also shows her generosity and willingness to, to roll with it and allow me to be experimental. Um, so yeah, Jennifer, thank you again for that. And, and, um, what I'm trying to do in this show is, you know, really, really like embrace my own gifts and skills and see what I'm capable of. And so it was fun to have that pressure of talking to her and feeling kind of like, ah, and then drawing you to, I don't know. It was really fun. It's like, a little bit of a look what I can do. But also if the whole game of this whole project is like, dear universe, like, what do you want from me next? Like use, please use me because I can't figure it out. I need to do this like community based thing to figure out where I'm most needed next. I also want to see like, you know, should I sing? Should I dance? Should I <laughs> draw? Like what can I do to make this show really engaging and valuable for people? So August friend was really willing to let me test that out and that's great. And if any future guests want to try drawing together, I'm so open to that. I love playing and, and trying things out. Okay. Uh, the next day was, oh, Amelia. So Emmy, um, is an interior designer and artist. And we really got to talk about like claiming the title of artist, which I think is a big deal for a lot of us, right? We have like very peculiar definitions of it. And sometimes we allow those to stop us from making things. And so this was a really insightful conversation that you might want to watch if you're at that point in your journey. Um, the next day was Ruth Armitage, who I've known for many years. And she teaches at the Sitka Center for Art and Ecology. Um, that was kind of a pivotal place for me in 2007, um, coming into the professional world of retreats and teaching retreats, uh, residencies, that type of thing. And she talks about like awards and accolades and perseverance. And if you're someone who is considering applying to opportunities or, um, you know, you've been rejected from some juried things, watch that one. Cause Ruth talks about how she applied six years in a row and got rejected from the, the watercolor society show. And now she's accepted in third place out of hundreds. So yeah, she's, she's a badass and she just keeps going. So that's awesome insight. Okay. The next one was Sherry Schneider and Sherry, again, that kind of emanating power. And, and I, I got to know Sherry on this call and she's a practicing psychotherapist. She's a Kundalini yoga teacher and an artist. And so we get to see some of her art, how she's working like in these symmetrical mandala shapes, but then she breaks the mold and just really enjoying her, enjoying getting to know her and, and letting her be seen. Okay. Then we had, oh yeah. Um, interviewing it's so fun to interview people that I have just been meeting like like the guests I just mentioned and some of my very best friends in the whole world you know the people that I like snotty ugly cry into like so enter Alicia Vine and Thistle I got to interview one of my best friends and she um it was a cool moment too because I've watched her develop her career and right now she's like rocking it. And so the sense of the sense of integration that you see in her and in her work and in the types of projects she's able to say yes or no to. She is she has like arrived at a level that that 
we had been striving for. She had been personally work. She has done a ton of work on herself and in her art to get there. And you will only watch her continue to grow from here. But it's definitely a moment of just being like, wow. Yeah. So it's fun to hear about her projects. Um, and I had kind of a wardrobe malfunction <laughs> that day, but hopefully you'll never notice it. Um, let's see. What was the next one? Um, we had, oh, yes, Alana. So Alana Garrigas is um a a painter a writer and she's a facilitator and we got to really learn about her journey and how she now facilitates the within artist community or within artist collective um which if you're interested in in that ch definitely check her out i think she's it's closed some months but she's opening it because of this interview so follow her check it out if you're craving that she does it she also does kind of a you check in set an intention and then you do a co-working um, thing and she's just a great thought-provoking thinker and she's doing a hundred day project as well a hundred day of artist questions and Alana is also a graduate of my mentoring program and so once again like forever I'm always just like ooh, I see the roots of that I see where that um, was born and it's just it's absolutely thrilling to watch her in motion it's always the goal is to stay in motion creatively okay then we get to meet Susan Hurwitt. And Susan is in Sarasota, Florida. And this was a really fun one for me as an interviewer because I got to meet Susan um, through this interview and, you know, kind of take a deep dive through her Instagram and website preparing for it. But I really hadn't known her before that, but she had been following me. And so it's that kind of like, wow, moment of realizing like, there you are, you've built this whole world, you're just right there. And it's really redeeming Instagram for me. It's like really cool to meet Susan or other people like you that are just right there that I have no idea about. And you're allowing not only me, but everyone that's watching to really see you and celebrate you. And yeah, Susan is, um, <laughs> there were a couple times where I was like, Susan is obviously such a lover of people and a teacher and she talks about mothering and I was like yeah let's talk about your art so we kind of like got back to her art in these stories and she's a person who um, was a lifelong creative and then in retirement had the opportunity to go all in and you can really see that she is all in and she talks about the story of this one leopard painting during COVID it's cool so check that one out um, especially if you're inspired and feeling like, you know, you didn't get a chance, like in your thirties, I, you know, now I've been doing this long enough. I didn't, I felt like it was too late when I recommitted and started at 28, you know, like really going for it. And now we're coming 10 years later. Um, and now I've worked with clients in every decade. I've worked with 20 year old, you know, people are in twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, and seventies. Um, not in any octogenarians yet, but I am open to it. And there is a very universal sense of feeling like we're too late, but you're not. You're never too late to actually do it and make your work and share it. And so I hope you get that bit of inspiration from, from any of my energy you encounter. And that's what I do with clients in my mentoring program is I, I create a very safe container to do that deeply. Um, yeah, so, okay, that's reflecting on 20 uh, days of Art Friend interviews, the first 20 days. Today is day 21. And a few things that I'm hoping to improve are um, the, let's see, so let's think about it. I, uh, administratively, it's gotten very busy, right? Cause there's like scheduling and rescheduling and researching people and following up and, and that sort of thing. And so I am challenged by the correspondence of it, but it is also like awesome because I love being in touch with kindred spirits. Um, so to build this into a show long-term, I'm going to have a discussion with Leslie Costin, who has been my virtual assistant since 2017 in various capacities, and see what level of administration she can take on so that we can streamline my work week as well as really make a, 
an experience for the people. I want them to feel held. I feel like everyone who has participated so far has been like so up for anything. You know, they just like book it themselves, fill out the questionnaire, get the reminders. I follow up. We meet in the green in the Zoom room before prep and then do it. Um, I love the scrappy nature of that. I want to preserve that. Um, but I'd love to figure out how to streamline a few of the admin things to save myself that stress. Um, another thing just kind of funny is like, I'd really like to paint this awesome. I'd like, I love how it says awesome, but it's backwards. I kind of want to paint it like both ways so you can read it whether I'm in this selfie mode or not. Um, I want to figure out other lighting. You know, there's a bunch of stuff. If I am going to also start this as a YouTube channel, um, there's definitely a few ways I'd like to improve sound as well as lighting. And I wouldn't be filming like YouTube videos on Instagram live, but I will comp complete the project here in this current form while I'm like researching how to do it long-term in YouTube. And I, I think I might keep this as like a once a week thing in Instagram once I complete a hundred days, cause it's so fun. It's such a fun way to meet people and to catch up with friends and past clients. So I'm loving it. Um, another thing that I would like to improve is, oh, the write-up. Wow, that is actually one of the hardest parts, is doing the write-up or the caption. And so I haven't figured that out yet because I want to write something based on what we talk about. And um, it, I like that part just stumps me and um, I finally just do it. But I think I might start more of a bullet pointed summary or something like that, that I can complete during the interview. Cause I want to make the whole thing a lot more seamless. Um, what else? Yeah. Doing something every day is challenging, right? Cause life happens and some days we're tired, some days we're not, but I would say that overall, um, for years truly, it's been very, very good for my, um, mental health to get myself ready every day to do my, to, you know, wear my favorite clothes and put on makeup and do my hair and et cetera. That has been awesome. And so thank you for this opportunity because, um, as I'm like, I already feel like we're into the next chapter and I, I'm noticing even the story has been changing. I'm like, Oh, I'm going through a divorce. Yada, yada. But I'm also like, wow, here I am. I'm powerful. I'm showing up. I'm proud of myself. I'm loving the community and, uh, we're creating this together. So there is a lot to celebrate in 21 days. And so um, for the coming days, I think the number one change that I'm going to make is actually to start reaching out to people because believe it or not, I have like, I guess a few friends, maybe Alicia, I've been like, hey, sign up for my show. Hey, sign up for my show. But besides that, I haven't really done a reach out. I haven't brainstormed all the people I'd like to have on the show or anything. I just keep putting it out there. People keep signing up. And last time I looked at my calendar, it's booked through mid April. So that part is awesome and easeful and really kind of affirming that we're in a flow and it's not all up to me. And I might start reaching out deliberately to a few people that just need a nudge or just need an invitation who I'd really like to talk to. Um, and I think that for you or anyone listening, go nominate people, you know, send them, send them one of your favorite interviews and say, Hey, you could be a guest on this show. There's a sign up link in that lady's bio in mine. There's a sign up link in my bio and they can sign themselves up for an art friend interview. It's really open to any artist. I also have some musicians coming on the show. Um, so it's open to other types of creatives. Doesn't have to be visual artists. I tend to specialize in that, but our creative process is very universal. So um, those are some of the things, some of the improvements, um, improving kind of my, my set design, my lighting, my audio, uh, the admin, um, wanting to like make this more intentional, whatever you see, um, supporting myself so that it doesn't, I don't get burnt out on it, if this is gonna become something bigger and then streamlining the process I do want to survey my guests to find out where I could improve their experience as well. Um, but overall, it's just been a real joy and a major undertaking, but giving me so much energy that I know I'm trusting it and I know it's the right thing right now. Okay.
thanks for watching. That's the 21 days into the 100 day project update. And we'll see you tomorrow. I'm interviewing my dear friend, fellow artist, and actually my original professional art mentor, Mady Rose McDonough. Okay, bye. I'm Anamika. Thanks for watching the Art Friend Show. See you in the next episode. I'd love to have you inside of Art Friend School, where we go deeper into these topics. Follow the link that's in the show notes or find it on my website at onamika.com.